It, it is really just a machine for re-election of people who support their agenda, largely Republicans. I, hey, I remember uh, interviewing a, a friend of mine who years ago uh, was going to run for the U.S. Senate in Arizona, didn't like nuclear, went to Washington to talk to the DNC, came back and was a proponent of nuclear. I thought, what am I, watching the invasion of the body snatchers? I mean, this guy, what, they had some conversion and drank the Kool-Aid? It's like, they, they had to have told, I mean, I don't know how this works. We will only support you if you support this. And Russell, so Russell's absolutely right. Well, we projected the cost of Palo Verde in 1978 for 86 completion, 1986 completion. We, we projected $6.1 billion. The utilities projected two point eight. They used sales pitches. We used scientific regression analysis. Right. We ended up 4% off. They came in at $5.9 billion. We were $0.2 billion off, really, really tightly close, because we used right. objective scientific approach. Right. They know now that these plants are going to cost double of what they are saying. It's just how to get them built. Right. They know if they lowball the estimate, they can get them built. Right. They well, call private private insurance absolutely won't even touch us with a ten foot pole. Oh, all these uh -uh. No, all no. These conservatives, these free market guys, uh, you know, you, they put away that roaring lion of free market. Uh, you know, um, pull your bootstraps up, and they pull this mouse out uh, that you know just. It's just, there's there's nothing market related there. If no. it couldn't survive on its yeah. own, no. it, should, it should go by the wayside. Mm -hmm. right. But suddenly these guys fall. It's just a way to steal violence. money. Mm -hmm. It's free yeah. enterprise for the poor and and, mm -hmm. and socialism for the rich or socialism for the large right. companies that don't really need right. it. Right. It's a redistribution. It's bad enough. It's a redistribution of wealth, creating shrinking the middle class, creating more poverty. But it's also environmentally and biologically putting everybody at risk. I mean, talk about a death dance with destiny. <laughs> hey, th thank you, Joe. We've got to, We've got to take a call from Mike. Michael, are you there? Taking my thanks for taking my call. Yeah, uh, great, great show. To Joe's point, you know, it's nice hearing real news and real information for a change uh, you know, instead of this nonsense that we are permeated with every day. You know, my question is really a simple one. You know, how big of a bus needs to T-bone our society before we wake up? You know, we've known about the nukes. We've known about the, the risks. Uh, China Syn Syndrome uh, movie way back in the 60s uh, elevated uh, the issue, and then all of a sudden it went away. You know, competing technologies are not only shunned, but ridiculed. You know, we know about the vaporized carburetors that are capable of, of putting out a thousand miles per gallon that exists, but they're, they're uh, hidden away in some... Uh, they just need to someplace. propose building a nuclear power plant next to the White House, and let's see how quickly they start talking about safety. Well, and, and, and I, well, quickly, I'm in the energy field. I've been doing this for a long, long time. I, I'm, I'm very familiar with competing technologies, and I've seen them uh, uh, come and go. You know, there's magnetic metallurgies that are 20 times more efficient uh, that can be used in, in the electric motors. Uh, you know, there's renewable hemp and bamboo that has a much higher energy property than soy or corn or some of the other things that we're getting ethanol from. You know, it is exactly what uh, Joe said, and, and we all, and you guys talked about, about the uh, privatization of profit and the socialization of, of debt. You know, uh, this thing is, unfortunately, uh, came to a point to where both parties, and, and this is a statistic that's interesting real quick, and that is both parties, uh, say that only 4% of the electorate are well-informed. So that's why they're getting away with it, yeah. because we have not uh, done our part as citizens to become uh, engaged right. and become educated, and therefore us driving the policy right. from the people up instead of where it is today. Right. But yeah. thanks for the great work, and thanks for your show. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Michael. Arnie uh, and Russell... Uh, we've got about uh, eight, eight or nine minutes left. In the remaining time, are there some issues you would like to get at and cover that uh, 
Well, well we haven't been able to get to so far. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that Arizona passed what's called a Senate concurrent memorial. It basically just means a Senate endorsement. The House and the Senate passed this. It was a proposal by L. Melvin, Senator L. Melvin, to make Arizona the nuclear waste dump for the entire United States. We should call him Al Mel- Meltdown. <laughs> well, see, people call him Al- Atomic oh, Al. Too. Atomic Al? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's kind of the name okay. that goes around. But, um, so he's proposing uh, a whole slew of, of, of activities to occur. One would be that uh, okay. the Arizona well, would become a reprocessing center for the United States. Uh, we would be the breeder reactor fuel line for the entire United States. Breeder reactors have had $150 billion put into them over the years, and, and they have not produced a single year's worth of economic electricity. There have been 15 breeder reactors done all over the United States, France, Russia, and and the, we've gotten zero out of it, really. It's a, it's a pie-in-the-sky pipe dream. And and that has not yielded anything. And he's, you know, Senator Melvin, with all due respect, has been putting out information that that is like comic book sourced, essentially. Uh, he, he's he has been saying that France does reprocessing and and uses 95 percent of the fuel's value. Wait a it, minute. It's been shown in study after study that the, the most you can technically get out of this fuel is 1.6 percent, and that would be extremely expensive to if, do. If it was working mo- so great for France, they wouldn't be dumping it in, in, the, can, in the Canadian in, Antarctic, no, right? Well, yeah, France actually has a pipeline off of La Hague that is dumping low-level waste that is being pushed by the by the Currents uh, all the way up to the Canadian Cir- Arctic Circle, which is, and they've been sued by several countries in in Europe. Uh, How come the World Trade Organization isn't suing about that, Russell? It, I, I'm just confused, man. And, and, in a better world. And, yeah? and finally, something that Republicans can admire about France. <laughs> That's right. You don't usually see them on the side of the French. But, but one thing, I, I would like to ask Arnie, where where do we go from here? Yeah. Where do we go from here in safety? Where is your where is Fairwinds going? I mean, you have a huge amount of experience in the nuclear industry and have, re, and have a, an insight that hardly anybody in the nation has. Right. Well, I, I, um, I'm against building you know, new nukes, right? and I think the 23 that are identical to Fukushima should be shut down. Absolutely. I don't think it's plausible to shut down the other 80 immediately, but right. I think, you know, a deal's a deal. We had a 40-year deal with these guys at the end of 40, that's it, and don't give them another 20. You know, the, and the last piece is, the, if you, the, the people that can, are convinced that nuclear power uh, is viable are going to have you believe that you can store nuclear waste for a million years. That that's that's part of the belief system. You have nuclear. We and oh by the way, we know we can store nuclear waste for for a million years. Those same people are saying, well, we can't do solar because we haven't figured out how to store the electricity overnight. <laughs> 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 oh my God, where are the straitjackets, Arnie? <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, it's just on the face of it. Arizona should be the solar capital of the world. I and, mean, and no what's happening there efficient is energy. Arizona has fallen so far behind right now. It is in the bottom four states for renewable energy right now. It's insane. And hey, we- I, had a, I had an energy company representative standing before the mayor and council about 10 years ago who, when challenged why we didn't have more solar here, mm-hmm. said, actually said, we have too much sun it's it doesn't work when there's too much beyond a certain amount and i i know i thought i was i, th- I thought i was in never never land he of course has gotten mixed up by the claim that when you increase the temperature the temperature your efficiency goes down but right. the thing is your efficiency if you have say 110 degrees goes down a little bit but because the sun availability of sunlight goes up so much it, it Compensa- wipes out that it wipes 5%, out the 5% several percent. times over right and so you know it, yeah, it's just taking taking in- information and completely contorting it right <laughs> arnie uh, anything else uh, no, I'm, uh, <laughs> no I, I think that, uh, you know, we need to push renewables conservation. Right. If we just behaved like the French, 
we wouldn't need a new power plant for 40 years because their per capita consumption is low. And the way they structure their rates, the more you use, the more you pay, that, that's an incentive. That's an incentive, consider. absolutely. So, and over 70% of their population is against building any new nukes also. Well, it's like de Gaulle said, how can you control a people that have more than 600 cheeses? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he knew that there was going to be safety there. How, you know, you can't lie to a population like that. <laughs> well, Ar- Arnie, thank you very much. Well, thanks for having me. I absolutely, it. absolutely. Russell, uh, anything else you want to cover? Want to m- mention uh, before we? I would just say people need to really get alert to what's going on with this L. Melvin plan, this Tonic L, and and you know this concurrent memorial SB 1548. Uh, was is just an atrocity, uh, and it, they're going to be asking Congress to use Arizona for all the nuclear waste dumping in the United States. People should be up in arms or about this, uh, writing oh, well, their senators, have a glowing meeting future. with their senators, meeting with their legislators, writing them, and voting them out of office. And, of course, he's doing this because this is how he wants to fund public education. <laughs> right. Now they become concerned about kids. <laughs> Only when they can use them as a, as a dumping ground for nuclear waste. He actually has a 0% rating by the Arizona Education Network. <laughs> Zero for voting for, ch- for children. Well, for people who believe that education can enhance individuals, for th- that's an admission on their part that he's, not, he's simply not educable. I mean, you yeah, know, this, this guy's a waste of time. So we're going we're gonna to finish up some business here, Dan. We've got about one more minute. And, oh, uh, oh, before you need... We, we, can come, we can come back. No, no, no. No, I, I had it wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so when does, when does uh, Palo Verde, when's the end of its life? Uh, well, Palo Verde uh, has three reactors. The first one went into operation in 82, then 84, and then 86. And they have 40-year licenses, but they already got their 20-year licenses extension. And you know, like that would be like designing. Well, let's a, do it while things are good. That would be like designing a car to last sixty years. Uh, you know, these things are they. They have pipes in all of these reactors that are submerged in moisture and water that weren't designed for that. They have electrical wiring through the through the uh, the cement structures at the base of the plants through the, through the, through the basements essentially, and and these plants weren't designed for it. As these plants get older, the chance of meltdowns, the chance of huge radio radiological releases goes up dramatically and this is going to become a more common uh, occurrence you know first we had uh, well the the reactor in LA then we had a number of other reactors including Three Mile Island we had Chernobyl we had Fukushima things are going to start happening quicker and quicker oh yeah and, and that's the, an awful thought the co2 costs from uh, from rebuilding cities from rebuilding natural habitats the co2 emissions are going to be are going to be higher than that of coal per kilowatt hour nuclear has a huge life cycle so to say that emits a lot of co2 so if they if they stop i think palo verde pays like a third of all the property taxes in maricopa county Mm, so if they ever stop it, that means everybody's property taxes are going to go up a, a, a whole bunch, which is the least of it. It's the least of it. Well, you would replace that, that with solar and other things that would right. increase the value and bring in property taxes also. Right. So I don't think that's really that much of an issue. No. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Arnie. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks.